There is a particular trope in space science fiction which allows the total melding of a human's consciousness with a machine. The mind of the man becomes the mind of the machine. The nervous system that normally controls her pulse, breathing, digestion, and muscles controls, say, a starship's life support system, power grid, propulsion, sensors, and weapons. Rather than messing with cumbersome physical controls like a joystick, mouse, keyboard, and going through the tedious chain of clicks or movements to effect an action, she could simply think full thrust forward, and perhaps even without the superfluous need for language, the vessel will move. We already have a term for this in modern day science. It's called a brain control interface, or BCI, and it already has real world consequences for our immediate future. I will cover more about this real world tech a bit later in this video. The game EVE Online is all about the BCI. EVE is certainly not the first sci-fi that has covered this, but it demonstrates how this would work for starships in the most thorough way I have seen. This idea is also used in the now retro space strategy game Homeworld. The massive mothership that is to find the Kushan Homeworld cannot function without the aid of a highly sophisticated CPU. But no AI is sophisticated or trustworthy enough to do so. One of the Mothership's designers, Karen Sajet, is jacked into the Mothership through a number of implants, and she becomes the heart, mind, and soul of this massive starship. This concept is also used in the latest version of Battlestar Galactica, with the appearance of the hybrids. Hybrids resemble human beings who are integrated into the Cylon capital ships known as Base Stars, where they become the central brain of the ship. In most of these situations, the human is jacked into the ship in a rather invasive way. However, in EVE Online, this is not so invasive. The players are called capsuleers, meaning all of their time in space is spent in a capsule capable of space travel, and that capsule is able to plug into all manner of starships. A capsuleer is jacked into the pod, but can exit the pod if they wish, especially while docked. Perhaps also, when the player locks out of the game, the capsuleer exits the pod. A common in-game phrase for this is called going planet side. You don't actually go to the planet surfaces in the game, but logging out is pretty much going planet side, meaning your own real planet. The in-game lore of the Capsuleer is as follows. At one point, the Galente Federation and the Caldari State were engaged in a massive war. The Caldari were the underdog in this conflict. They did not have the resources or starship crews to win the war until they were helped out by the mysterious Jove and given capsuleer technology. This allowed the Caldari to operate their ships with unparalleled efficiency and with less crew. Furthermore, if a capsuleer died, there were several backup clones for each, which were regularly updated with all their learned skills and memories. A new clone would be activated to take the place of the destroyed one with minimal losses to the resourcefulness of that valuable individual. Of course, not just anyone can become a capsuleer. To be reborn as a capsuleer with the proper neural mapping and implants requires you to pretty much physically die after all. This requires a mind that is strong and disciplined, otherwise the new clone may go mad. Capsuleers must undergo lots of training before they are even selected for the program. The clone has all of the character's original memories and traits, plus a few extra perks. One of these perks is the ability to have skills directly injected and then trained over time. After all, to control several different types of starships and systems, the mind has to be trained into them. Try to imagine what this would be like. Let's say your clone is in the process of training for a particular starship. This training would include a great deal of neural mapping. Your autonomic nervous system would need to understand the life support and power grid of the starship. This is like breathing, heartbeat, and other basic functions. To maneuver instead of taking steps forward as if walking or running, you would engage thrusters. And to go to warp speed, perhaps this would be something like the sensation of jumping. Of course, this is all in tandem with your new magnificent senses. Through sensor probes, you can see yourself, I mean your ship, in third person view. You could also sense celestial objects from afar, feel the gravity influence, and the warm solar winds on your ship's skin. Firing weapons might be something like a punch or a strike. And when your ship takes damage, it could be painful in ways you cannot imagine. Furthermore, not every ship is the same. Perhaps maneuvering a Glinty or a Mars ships feels more like walking, while maneuvering Caldari or Mimitar ships feels more like flying. 
Either of these sensations has to be trained so that you can perform them as if they were second nature. Alright, I've covered enough how EVE Online deals with this, but where are we in the real world with the brain-computer interface? We're further than you think, but before I go into this, it's time for a brief word from this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. I can see the capsuleers of EVE Online requiring a lot of the interactive training that Brilliant.org provides. There are a number of courses about math, science, and computer science that can be six times more effective than lectures. I myself began a lesson on special relativity when I first got Brilliant, something that will surely help me to talk more intelligently about spaceships in the future. Brilliant has lots of great courses for all ability and knowledge levels, so you will find something that interests you. Master all sorts of technical subjects with topics ranging from 3D geometry to astrophysics to quantum computing. Join millions of people who are already learning on Brilliant and take advantage of the special offer just for those of you who are watching this video. Head to the Brilliant.org link in the description below to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 of you to begin will also get 20% off an annual membership. Alright, on to the current state of brain control interfaces and why I believe EVE Online is somewhat prophetic in this regard. It is no secret that the medical industry and the military are already all over BCI research, with the gaming and space industry not far behind. The applications for the military include battlefield situational awareness, faster control, and even the ability to manage things like drone swarms. Yes, you heard that right, drone swarms. Of course, in the medical field this applies to robotics and bionics, and most of you can already imagine all the gaming applications. What this initially requires is a sensing device worn on the head. The most hardcore versions are skull caps with many electrodes over a conductive gel. These are among the most sensitive devices. Each person has something like a neurological fingerprint of brain signals for various actions. The device senses the brain signals and the software calibrates your unique brain signals that translate into various commands. And voila, you got yourself a BCI. However, such devices are very expensive and take time to set up. The technology is evolving rapidly though. For very basic commands, perhaps for a specific application, game, or robotic device, it does not require an extremely detailed brain sensor. So now these devices can resemble something as simple as a headband. And BCI can do so much more than interpret your commands. This is used to determine your state of mind, such as fatigued, excited, angry, alert, etc. And that alone is very helpful for doing something as simple as, say, taking a road trip in your car, especially if it can alert that you're not performing optimally or about to fall asleep and crash. Now, there would be a new level to this eventually, a bit more akin to EVE Online, and that is altering the perception of the normal human experience altogether. For example, an osprey gliding over the water can focus way out or way in on a fish swimming just beneath the surface. Some herd animals scan the horizon in a near 360 degree arc with their vision. These are experiences outside the normal human condition, but perhaps the human mind can be trained to experience this and then interface with machines which have similar capabilities. Once I had a dream. This was some years ago when I was working hard to make a new model for one of my favorite starships, the Romulan Winged Defender. It looks like a hawk, of course. In this dream, I was floating in a coastal village, looking out at the sea from where the wind was blowing. There was a post just below me. My body shapeshifted into this ship, and I was able to gently glide down and land on the post below. In my dreams, I become a starship. Thanks for watching, space friends. Until next time.